but tonight we're talking about metabolic disorders, um, syndrome X, and the concepts of being able to support your patients with uh, different supplementation that will support their endocrine system and their meta metabolism. So first off, um, this is me and I'm a chiropractic physician specializing in health and well-being as, a, as a, a wellness coach. So a little brief, brief history about metabolism. I like this concept. This is 2,000 years ago, but actually it's Chinese philosophy has been around for 5,000 years, but this particular concept um, started with the Chinese. And then we'll discuss various uh, bits of history about how metabolism came about. But uh, 2,000 years ago, ancient Chinese philosophy described the yin-yang concept, which is also true in metabolism. The yin and the yang, the balance, how energy flows. Traditional Chinese medicine prepared a system of medicine, usually herbs, and created a diagnosis and treatment that were designed to maintain the yin and yang as well as the flow of qi. So yin and yang, of course, is the light and dark, heat and cold, dry and wet, that, that concept. And then ultimately how the flow of qi was able to pass around the different um, meridians in the system. So I really love the idea. I'm uh, trained in traditional Chinese medicine and acupuncture as well, and, and the concept of getting that flow to happen is so important within metabolism. Then 800 years ago, the term of metabolism was derived from the Greek tablismos. <laughs> yes, I don't speak Greek, but I did learn some Latin, of course, in medical school, which means change or overthrow. So Hippocrates is considered the founder of medicine as a rational science and saw pepsis, or digestion, essential to good health. And that's where metabolism starts, what you eat, how you digest, how you break it down, and ultimately how your, the different organ systems, your thyroid, your adrenal glands, and so forth, use that and, and create that overall metabolic function. He believed that digestion and metabolism is needed to be balanced to avoid what he thought was the origin of most disease. And that's, that's my concept as well. Digestion and what happens in the gut is the origin. In the 1200s, Muslim scholar Ib al-Nafis from Damascus further identified biochemical concepts, you know, how the chemical, how the digestion, how the amylase, protease, lipase, and, and the different uh, biochemical uh, function happened there as well. 1600s, Santorio from today's so Slovenia studied metabolism by weighing himself after various activities and compared these weight differences in his urine and feces, galvanizing the study of metabolism. That's interesting. So he was able to look and see what happened there from the time he ate it to the time it came through. 1900s, Hans Krebs, of course you all know the Krebs cycle, is attributed to defining cellular respiration by the chemical reactions, urea cycle or Krebs cycle, and the citric acid cycle. So that's very important there. So this is all back to biochemistry. So he was where I started. That started in the 1900s. The 20th century instrument advanced the further discoveries such as chromatography, x-ray, electron microscopy have also allowed for further discovery and detailed analysis of the metabolism. So there's a lot of, a lot of biochemistry within metabolism, but the biggest thing I think we need to know is how our digestion breaks it down and, and the lack of digestive enzymes breaking it down, um, not breaking it down far enough then affects how these other cycles work. The metabolism is, according to all the chemical reactions that take place in the body to convert or use energy. So metabolism is like a campfire. So you need, we need to actually have you know, fuel and heat and so forth. So we need to put on the right amount of wood, continue to put the right amount on an incremental level. So the wrong kinds of fuel can cause problems. So if we have, you know, if we we're going to have too, too big of a boom, not enough fuel, then we don't have enough heat. So not enough wood and the fire goes out. Too much wood will smother the fire and burn out of control. And too long without more wood and the fire will die down, of course. So that's just about how much food we eat, the kinds of food, as we'll talk about later, uh, vegetables and fruits and how that metabolizes versus uh, sugar or fats. So all of that is so vital to how the metabolism works. So general metabolic functions. Every step is catalyzed by an enzyme. Every step of the process is enzymatic, not just digestive enzymes, but the enzymes within the actual uh, the cell and, and parts of that. So breaking down carbs, proteins, and fats to release energy. 
converting chemicals, vitamins and minerals into substances that can be utilized and transported into other cells. Transforming excess nitrogen into waste can be excreted through the urine and then disorders are when abnormalities occur within these processes. So you remember from, from chemistry and in the cell, all of, this, all of these processes, conversion from glucose down to, uh, to ATP, and then ultimately the, the pyruvate cycle. Man, this brings me right back to biochemistry in that first, uh, first year of, of chiropractic college. And it was such a big deal to remember to understand that Krebs cycle and how that all worked. But enzymes are so important to the whole process. So uh, modern research suggests as many as 80% of people tested have subclinical hypothyroidism, which is interesting because the thyroid is the metabolic function, the metabolic center of our system. But when they're tested, 80% of them are subclinical hypothyroid. So we discuss this through taking the temperature. This means that their, their thyroid function test demonstrates a normal level of the thyroid hormones, but the, uh, upon basal temperature, they have a, a basal temperature less than 97.4. So this is done under the arm in the axillary temperature, not under the mouth or under the tongue because you can have uh, infections or, or layers of infection that cause problems. So you have an elevated temperature, but it's not actually what you want to see. So this is done in the morning before they get out of bed. They'll take their temperature under their arm before they move and, and record that. Anything below 97.4 is low metabolism, low thyroid function. Metabolic disorders continued here. Principles, the principal types of metabolic disorders, according to Western medicine, there are, these are the ty different types. So metabolic brain diseases, iron metabolism disorders, lipid metabolism disorders, DNA repair deficiency, glucose metabolism, calcium metabolism disorders, acid base imbalance, um, inborn error metabolism, phosphorus metabolism disorders, proteostasis deficiency. So there's a lot of types of meta metabolic, metabolic disorders. But as we'll find here in a bit, treating and repairing the, the, main, um, organis the main organs of metabolism is big. We've got that ability to, to repair the DNA of those organs, specifically the thyroid, the pituitary, and the hypothala, hypothalamus. So there you go. So metabolic disorders are very common today. Adrenal fatigue, so our adrenal glands are like pawns in a chess game. So they're on the front lines. They're right there, right in the, in the beginning. And depending on the stressors that we have, our emotional, our emotional feelings, and what we perceive as a threat, so production, adrenaline is released and ultimately we create fatigue. So the adrenal fatigue can be caused by a number of endocrine conditions. The leading cause is physical and emotional stress, or even subconscious stress, which creates cortisol levels that then become out of control. Western medicine does not have a definitive laboratory test for this condition. We can check adrenal deficiency and the, the, the fatigue of the adrenal gland, but overall, looking at adrenal glands, uh, the medicine doesn't really do much with that. That's more in alternative medicine. Stress leads to fatigue on other parts of the body, such as the hypothalamus. So the way I see it is the adrenal glands are, are first. They produce all the adrenaline, but ultimately, It'll, over long terms, a long term, we'll get um, the hypothalamus, which will then become inflamed. We call it hypothalamitis. So hypothalamitis is an inflammation of the hypothalamus, and it causes the pituitary to malfunction and other endocrine functions to become irregular. So the hypothalamus is the part of the brain that's, that controls the pituitary. So the pituitary sits in the cella turcica, or turcus saddle, and it's what controls the feedback between the adrenal glands or the thyroid, it all is controlled by the adrenal gland, which is controlled by the hypothalamus. So when the hypothalamus becomes inflamed from too much, from too much stress, it, it becomes inflamed, and then we get all kinds of issues. Then we're, then we're looking at um, multiple sclerosis and lupus, and all of those are an issue where the hypothalamus has become so inflamed. So we can work with that using hypothala, and we'll talk about that here in just a minute. So common symptoms of metabolic disorders. Uh, many metabolic disorders have no symptoms, um, but ultimately they will lead to symptoms. Some metabolic disorders, such as metabolic syndrome, is visible by the individual having a large waist or waist circumference, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Other common symptoms may include lethargy or fatigue, blurred vision, jaundice, seizures, increased thirst and urination, 
weight loss, excessive weight gain. And I like this right here. Sorry, your met metabolism makes it difficult to be your friend. So, you know, a thin person sometimes has trouble both ways. Sometimes people judge heavier people. Uh, oh, you must be uh, lethargic. You, you must be uh, someone that sits around and eats too much. But literally, there's so many people that I have in the practice that eat like a bird and cannot lose. And there you go with syndrome X. So metabolic syndrome, also known as syndrome X. So it's identified by Western science only 20 years ago. It's found in one, of, one in six Americans, or 47 million Americans, have this situation according to the American Heart Association. Genetic or more common in African Americans, Hispanics, Asians, and Native Americans. So the risk uh, increases in older age and is identified by high blood pressure, high blood sugar, unhealthy cholesterol levels, and abdominal fat. So there's, a, there's definitely a shape that we're looking at. So here you're looking, um, there's you can, the, the very common pear-shaped look. And this is interesting. So above the waist and below the waist. So you've got the apple shape is more visceral fat, higher risk of weight-related health problems, versus here the pear shape, less visceral fat, lower risk of weight-related health problems. Um, but this is a very common look for low thyroid with the pear shape. So this is closely linked to family history. It matters where you wear your fat. Plant-based diets will help cur curb this syndrome. So, of course, as we eat more complex carbohydrates in the form of plants, I usually suggest in my practice 50% vegetables, 20% fruit. So 70% of your diet are fruit and vegetable. Dietary fiber will also lower risk by lowering cholesterol. What you drink can affect the risk. So fruit juices, alcohol, things that are high fructose, and especially now we've got the, the uh, high, high uh, fructose corn syrup. And it's just an amazing thing when you look, see the, the middle of America all covered with soybeans or, or corn. It's just amazing to think that most of that's going to high fructose corn syrup or ethanol for gas. So it's, uh, yeah, it's that high fructose corn syrup is just does not do a, do a body good. It actually tricks us. It makes us want more sugar. And it's in everything. Every, almost everything is processed. You can try to eat as best you can of vegetables and fruit. And then you've still got to look for genetically modified GMOs as well. Exercise will combat metabolic syndrome. Sitting too much is it will increase the risk. And then get your fasting glucose uh, levels tested as well. So all of this is so important with syndrome X. So just think about that. Increase your exercise, of course. Vegetables, uh, fruit. Watch your, your high glycemic fruits and vegetables. Stay away from refined sugars and read the, le read the levels, everything has that high fructose corn syrup. So according to the American Heart Association and the National Heart and Lung Blood Institute, these are the five risk factors that make up metabolic syndrome. So obesity, high blood pressure, insulin resistance, and high blood cholesterol leads to syndrome X. So these are the five then, large waist size, cholesterol, or high, uh, cholesterol and high triglycerides, cholesterol low and low good cholesterol is the HDL, high blood pressure, and then blood sugars, high fasting glucose levels. So you can look here. So this is what is, in, is the idea of syndrome X. So diet perspectives. Perspectives on, in diets often change. For example, for over 50 years, it was believed that saturated fats were bad and that grains and high fructose fruits were healthy diet. So today we know that saturated fat is not, is not all bad and that an overabundance of carbs and sugars that lack essential fatty acids are a major contributing factor to metabolic problems. Um, in the naturopathic perspective shared by Dr. Schwartzbein um, has a concept here of losing weight, the healthy way. It is necessary to be healthy in order to lose weight. So many people are saying, well, gosh, doc, I'm not losing weight. You know, I'm, I'm just, it's just not happening. And I'll tell them, look, we've got, to, we've got to get your health back online. Don't even look at your, your weight yet. We've got, to get, we've got to get enzyme processes get in. And we've got to literally look at the six essentials of life, what you eat, what you drink, your exercise, your breathing, and your sleeping. All those, the six essentials must be in place before you have the ability to start to shed weight. 
So losing weight does not generally mean healthy. A lot of people can shed weight and still not be healthy. Healing metabolism must be done before weight loss or more accurately fat loss. And I like that. It's um, more accurately fat loss. One needs to be one needs to balance blood glucose levels as well. Watching watching um, dropping your pop, dropping your your uh, your juices. Just basically eating, drinking, uh, drinking water that you could have maybe a, a squeeze of lemon or lime in. Just make it as basic as you can. Because remembering everything that you drink, you've got to metabolize. You've got to bring it through your liver and your kidneys, and that's stress. Uh, resistance training, for example, weight training to build muscle before engaging in cardiovascular exercise. So you can weight, you can lift weights which is good because that's going to increase your metabolic function of, of your red, red fibers, which have a higher metabolism, so you're actually shedding weight during while you're sleeping, if you will, and then bringing in your cardiovascular exercise as well. Uh, create long-term plans of balanced foods, nutritional supplementation, getting enough sleep and stress management. So this is a good book here. You can read, look at that on the, and pull that up on the net. The earlier a metabolic disorder is detected, the more effective treatment may be for that for the individual. I mean, so, so many times it's way far into the process, like this outline here of this person. Once you've got all the belly fat and things are just dropping, your um, all the other enzyme processes aren't happening. It's much more difficult to get them get them all back online. When it comes to metabolic disorders, treatment begins with what goes into the mouth. The right food supplements and lifestyle changes can make the difference. So now we'll talk about what we can do to support this. Hypothalamus, we talked about, is the part of the brain that controls everything. Prior, you know, to about five years ago, I really didn't think about much about the hypothalamus. I was always thinking about pituitary and how it controlled the feedback loops to the adrenal glands, then to the thyroid, to the pancreas. So we've got to look at the hypothalamus first in normalizing function. So hypothalamus normalizes hypothalamic function ultimately then controlling the pituitary. So pituitin supports the pituitary gland and its endocrine function. Next, the adrenex supports the adrenal gland, increases the energy of, of those suffering from adrenal fatigue. So when I'm starting with somebody that walks in that's extremely, extremely, extremely um, just sick, I usually start with adrenex and integracel, like we'll discuss here in just a bit. And that just gives them a good blanket of energy, supports, starts the adrenal glands lifting back up so they can have enough adrenaline to even face fighting an infection or fighting, uh, supporting another organ system. So the adrenex first is where I usually go. But again, I'm always using kinesiology. I'm always using muscle testing and electrodermal screening to determine where I should go. Of course, you know, a good thorough history and your, your clinical decision making is going to give you the, the best idea of where to go. Uh, then thyroidin is for this is the basic for the for met metabolic function. Uh, it's in charge of of your basal temperatures and and overall um, metabolism. And then pancreas works with the pancreas and works on insulin levels. Maniferm is going to support the male and increase uh, the male strength. Femiferm does equally with the female. Um, and I'm going to take just a second. I usually suggest men uh, or femiform taken uh, after menstruating from day four of their menstruation to day 20. That's when the endometrium is building, and that's the best there. Uh, and then use to, uh, I use um, PM Sync. So PM Sync is taken from day 21 through day three, and that works with with the PMS cycle. But you don't be afraid to give if it shows for a female to give them maniform. Likewise give femiform for a male if needed. And that's something you can ask within the kinesiology. Fulvacava supports uh, their ability for electrochemical balance and makes nutrients more absorbable. So that's very effective. Adipothin and Metabol are, work very well at, at, uh, at shedding. And you, you, know, I, you, you notice I use the word shedding versus losing. So this is, works with leptin, and that's the ability to work with shedding the fat. And Metabol, again, the carb and blood sugar and balances the harmonizing by harmonizing enzyme activities. So this is this is a real great punch here. So we've got so many so many colors to paint with on our paint palette as we're looking at what formulas to use in in, met, in metabolic and metabolism.
Other, other people also talk about the Integra cell, and this is what I was mentioning earlier. When they're so fatigued, I usually use the Integra cell with Adrenex. The Integra cell is 8,000 milligrams per scoop. So each scoop has 8,000 milligrams of type A antioxidant. Type A antioxidants will knock out a million free radicals per milligram. So there's 8,000 milligrams per scoop times a million equals 80 billion free radicals that this will knock out. So most people that are sick have a ton of free radical damage and free radicals all over the place. So I usually use a scoop or two a day of the Integra cell and as much as needed one or one to four a day of the Adrenex for that first week. And they'll have them come back and then we can start from there in, in wherever else we, where else we need to go. Minerals are also very important. So MinComp and CalComp at, uh, at, at getting the mineral perspective, the cofactors and other things necessary, enzymatic activities are important with, for, for uh, minerals are very important with that. And CalComp helps with balancing the pH. Usually with somebody that's really sick, has a high pH, this helps to bring that that uh, pH level down. We also work with getting rid of layers of infection when we're talking about metabolism. Um, you know, metabolism could be blocked up in their gut, so they're you know anywhere from bacteria to to uh, microparasites or large parasites or fungus within the gut. And the new one that's come out this last June at our at the Innovita seminar was the Lympha X to open up and get the lymph to to um, to move more effectively. But the layers of infection, so many times, even um, within the, thi the thyroid, um, Hashimoto's thyroiditis is suggested that that's a virus that, that can uh, be affected there as well. So check and see if there's any types of layers of infection within any of the endocrine system. Any of those organs can be affected by, so use, the, use your kinesiology to determine if there is an issue. <clears throat> and all I'm doing is asking, do we need to address a layer of infection before we start to support um, in any of the organs. So if, you're not, if you don't understand kinesiology, you can look up the kinesiology um, video on YouTube through the Innovative portal as well. And I think that's a really easy way to determine and learn to learn in, uh, uh, kinesiology as well. Okay, so then as far as treatment goes, to look at hypothala. Take, again, take one to four capsules per day of any of these. But again, you must do kinesiology to determine what's needed. You're just guessing if you don't. So hypothala, pituitin, again, that controls the, all the feedback loops. Pituitin to the adrenal, pituitin to the thyroid. Hypothala, pituitin, and, and adrenex is, is where I really look, and, and then the thyroidin. But it may also be effective to treat the liver and digestive systems to ensure effective digestion absorption and assimilation with the following. So make sure that you're, you know, as we're working in the thyroid and, or the uh, liver, colon, digestion, then we work with these three here as well. It makes sense that as you change the diet, as you take responsibility, as you take responsibility, that's what I think, that I think we see a lot in our population now is entitlement. I'm going to hold my hand out. I'm going to you know, I'm not going to take responsibility. I'm going to go to my to my government and have them pay for my health care so that I can, you know, take this drug to manipulate this symptom. I feel sick, so you're going to give me, or I've, I've got this uh, low flow metabolism, so you're going to put me on a thyroid stimulant. I got this high blood pressure, so you're going to put me on a high blood pressure med. You know, it's just manipulating. It's it's the whole system. Our whole country is manipulating versus taking responsibility and and going after true treatment. So, so whenever you start to talk about alternative, or it is becoming more mainstream, alternative medicine is becoming more the norm now, if you will. More people are saying, it doesn't make sense to me to manipulate this with a chemical. I want to, I want to get to cause. So I'm glad to see that, that, that happening more. But, um, but, but of course, I, I really feel that the, the people that are having their patients take responsibility and get away from the handout is, is what's needed. I saw this shirt the other day, and I'm sure it was from a vet. It said, always earned, never given. And I, I appreciated that shirt. You know, and, and, and so when things are given to you, and you are earning it, and, you're, and, and someone gives you a, a gift or a whatever, it's always so much appreciated, not demanded. So there's my political view for tonight. 